Today's video is all about fruit pectin. You know that stuff that you buy at the store to make your jellies and jams thicker? That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's super easy. It only takes two to three ingredients. It stores really easy and it brings you a little bit of independence from the grocery store. The first time I made this was last year when I went to the store and a lot of the shelves were empty and the canning supply area was very empty and there was no pectin. And I began thinking, what did they do 100 years ago? They didn't go to the store and buy pectin to make their jam. They must have used something else. So I just Googled and readily found how to make my own pectin. So what I'm gonna use is apples. I'm gonna thin the apples on our tree and this is what I will be using to make our pectin. So by, by thinning these, the ones that I have that will be left behind will end up being nice large apples. When they're all left together like this, they're a lot smaller. Apples are a high pectin fruit, so they're a really good one to use when making the pectin. You don't have to thin your apples on your tree, but the immature unripe fruit contains the most pectin. As it ripens, the amount of pectin in it is less. You can use the cores and peelings from projects that you're working on, like making applesauce or pies or what have you. You can save those all up in your freezer until you have enough to make a patch of pectin as well. That's what I actually did last year. Crab apples, crab apples are awesome. So if you have a crab apple tree or know somebody who has one, ask them for some of their apples because they contain a lot of pectin. All right, let's go make some pectin. So now I washed these and I'm going to quarter them. Don't peel or core them because that's where there's higher concentrations of pectin. Then they're gonna go in the pot. All right, next I'm going to add water. I'm not gonna quite cover them with the water. So the stove is on high. And I'm probably gonna be end up cooking these for about 30 to 45 minutes until they cook down and they're soft and there's and it looks about as half as much as in there now. So fun fact about pectin, it is the substance in the apple skin that holds the cell walls together. And in your gem and jelly recipes, pectin along with sugar and an acid like lemon juice all works together to make that fruit juice or the fruit itself gel. I printed a list here to um, let you know the fruits that always need pectin when you're making jams and jellies. Apricots, blueberries, sweet cherry, figs, grapefruit, never heard of grapefruit jam or jelly. Western Concord grapes, guavas, nectarine, peaches, pears, Italian plums, pomegranates and strawberries. So those will always need an acid, pectin, or both when preserving the jelly or jam. I get a lot of information from a website called pickyourown.org. I will put the link in the description box because they will have a list of fruits that are high in pectin and so you don't need to add any. And they have a list of fruits that have a medium amount of pectin in them and then they have a list of the fruits that always need pectin and or lemon juice. So check out that website. That's where I found the information last year on making pectin, and that one requires that you add a little bit of lemon juice to your apples when you're cooking them, but I didn't do that this time. I went ahead and just decided to do the apple and water only method and try that out. When it's like this, you need to make sure you're stirring it because it can scorch to the bottom as the water begins to evaporate. I saw some black in there and I thought, oh no, I scorched it, but it's actually just those little fuzzy, hairy things where the blossom used to be. Okay, people, use a bigger pot. I'm at my daughter's and this is the biggest pot I could find. Because, but look at, look at the mess it's making, splurting out all over. And it's splurting up and hurting my hand too. So when you do this, Use a big old deep pot so those little spurts don't burn you and make a giant mess all over your daughter's kitchen. 
See how it's reduced down quite a bit? It's not quite half as much as it was, but it's getting closer. Okay, that looks like we're about halfway there, halfway reduced, so I think it's time to pour it into a colander. The directions say to strain this through a cheesecloth, not a colander. But what I have found to be quicker in life is to first strain it through a colander Get the biggest junk out of it first, and then strain whatever goes through the colander through a cheesecloth, and it will be quicker. So this pectin stores really well. It'll last about a week in the refrigerator, or about six months in the freezer, and you can also can it in a 10 minute water bath if you wanna store it for longer. So my favorite jelly is blackberry, and it doesn't actually need pectin to come out wonderful every single time. I'm curious, what's your favorite jelly or jam? Also, let me know if you think you're ever going to make your own homemade pectin. I'm, I'm just curious who out there would actually give this a go. So last year, I used all of the apple peelings and cores and all the scraps from, um, from making applesauce and pie filling from our summer apple tree that ripens in mid-July. I did not do that this year because I wanted to get this video out earlier than later for those of you who have apple trees that ripen early and you might want to make apple pectin by using your scraps as well. That's why I just made a little tiny batch. I got the bulk of the liquid stuff squished through the colander and so now I'm going to take this and strain it through cheesecloth. So I put some of the pulp in here and it is slowly going to drip. So this is going to take quite a bit of time to drip all the way through. So I like to kind of gently squeeze it and help it out. Okay, so how you use the pectin is for every cup of fruit, which I'm using chopped fruit or juice, you add one quarter cup of the pectin. This is hard to do one-handed, but let me add the pectin. Then you're gonna add an equal amount of sugar. So I'm gonna add one and a quarter cups of sugar. Now we're gonna stir it while it heats up on the stove. I know the sugar looks a little brown. It is granulated sugar. It's just the natural kind where they don't um, bleach it. Okay, it's at a boil now. Again, I used too small of a pot, didn't I? Oh, look, I have a fire. Whoopsie. Uh, oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Let's move that. Don't use too pot, small of a pot, people. It's a bad thing. Oh, man, there I go again. Okay, I think it's ready. I have been cooking it maybe three more minutes, four more minutes, but um, so my camera card filled up right when I was at the end of make the jam. Let me show you. All right, here it is. It is nice and thick. It's gelled up beautifully. Let's taste it. Mmm, so good. I don't normally eat jam off a spoon, but this is really good. It's perfect. So, so perfect. Mmm, so good. Anyways, if you want to make your own pectin, now you know how. My pectin was a little thick because my cheesecloth had separated too much because I was impatient trying to squeeze it out. So, it still worked beautifully. Um, so you can either be patient and just let it sit through your cheesecloth. It'll take about 24 hours. It takes a long time for it all to drip down. Or if you do like I do and squeeze a little bit, it'll be a little thicker, but it doesn't taste, it doesn't change the flavor or anything. It works beautifully and it goes faster that way. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. So until next time, see ya.